sexy. Hi, hi, everybody. Hold on. I shouldn't have picked it up with my right hand. Hi, everybody. I'm a, I'm a wizard. I'm a wizard. I went to Ilver Morney, whatever the shit. I went to American Hogwarts. I was a horned serpent at the uh, whatever that school's called. And I'm magic. Don't believe me? Watch this. Creo Avia. Uh, Avias. I screwed that up. Hold on. Creo Aviator. Is. Uh. Shit. What is that spell? Oh, I remember. Creo Avia. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Folks. Today we're going to be talking about magic. Uh, a, a, a couple different kinds of magic. The first magic is VHS technology, which is what this is being filmed on. I am filming this on a VHS camera that was purchased at JCPenney in 1987. And you may have noticed that because I look 10 times better than I ever have. Because VHS hides all my blemishes. Between you and me, the whole reason I'm filming this on VHS is because I have a horrendous cold sore right now. And I'm hoping the VHS covers it up. Nah, I'm just yanking your chain. The reason we're recording on VHS is because today we are going to be looking at a VHS that was recorded in early 1997 uh, in Ogden, Utah. A town that is about 40 minutes north of the town that I grew up in, Murray, Utah. So, uh, you know... This is same region. Uh, every commercial that aired on this broadcast would have been playing on the broadcast I watched had I watched these specials, which I don't know that I would have. Now here's the deal, folks. If you are into retro media, there's a good chance that you're familiar with my friend Ian McMystery uh, on Brutal Moose. He's not my friend. He doesn't know that I exist. But he does a very similar show called Mystery Tapes. I'm hoping to, that this is uh different enough i mean we know it'll be less less quality so that's a difference right today we are looking at lance burton who was a great magician from the 90s we're gonna watch him do uh his magic special the encounter and then after that we're gonna watch some david letterman that's gonna be fun right so th it's great this is a cool thing about vhs's man is they are a window on the past. They're like little, little plastic time machines. So, so come, come away with me on a journey through time and space with the TV time machine. Standing in the heart of the worst kept secret in America, Area 51. It seems a little bit odd to me that the United States military would build a hangar uh, out of a soundstage. UFO Ground Zero. Hi, I'm Lance Burton, and this is The Encounter. Whether you're a believer or a skeptic, you've got to admit, we've seen some unexplainable images of UFOs and alien life forms. Incredible things seen by people all over the world from all walks of life. And that's why I'm here in the middle of nowhere hoping to make a UFO appear out of thin air. Now I know all that sounds impossible. But in my line of work, I've never had a problem believing the impossible. Hey guys, open up, I'm late. I need a ride to Vegas. 
My show's about to start. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I don't... I want to get to the magic. But seeing this aerial shot of the Las Vegas Strip made me very nostalgic. Because, I, like I said, I grew up in Utah. Oftentimes when we would go to California, uh, say for Disneyland, we would stop at Las Vegas. And Las Vegas in the 90s, there was some cool crap going on. My favorite was the Battle of Buccaneer Bay in front of Treasure Island, where it was like a full-on battle between a pirate ship and a ship from the British Royal Navy, and the Navy ship would sink, and there were all these crazy pyrotechnics, and it was very, very exciting. And then they changed it to uh, uh, scantily clad women dancing and shaking their booties. I mean, look, I was a teen when that happened, so I'm sure... You know, at that time, that probably did get me excited, but looking back, you know, what a ripoff. Bring back Battle of Buccaneer Bay, Treasure Island. If you're even still open. I don't know, I haven't been to Vegas in a long time. Okay, so once Lance finally gets to the stage, he starts his act with a pretty routine number, right? It's the whole making people appear in the magical box. But it's topped off with this little nugget. Sexy. <laughs> what was why did that why why was someone saying sexy when that alien came out i mean true don't get me wrong that is one sexy alien right it gets me hard uh anyways that sound effect, that sexy sound effect, I'm sorry folks, from now on, every single video, when I appear on camera, that is going to be the sound effect that plays. I don't make the rules. I do make the rules. I can't help it though, okay? It is what I have to do. And now they're doing the Macarena. Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of the SS Encounter. All right, so once that incredible number is done lance has all his ladies come into his cape and then he turns them into doves okay this is going to be the first of many times that birds appear why do birds suddenly appear over there over here later on it's going to be ducks uh and we're going to get to that. I love ducks. Ducks are some of my favorite animals. You throw a duck in front of me and I'm going to be distracted. I don't know what it is. I think it's the funny way that they waddle. Not important, but here we see some doves flying out. And that's a, that, that's a pretty common thing for classical magicians, right? It's just fascinating to me. I mean, birds are the descendants of dinosaurs, right? I mean, they have evolved to the point that they are streamlined enough for flight. And this is what we have them doing for us. Makes you proud to be a human being, doesn't it? With that final trick, we now get into the good stuff. Let's, let's look at some commercials, starting with this absolute banger of a Pepsi commercial. Pepsi theft, it can happen anywhere, anytime. Fight back. Introducing the Pepsi Club. Now Pepsi moments don't have to become anxious moments. Excuse me. What you were about to see did not actually happen, <laughs> but it could happen. They took everything! Look, Ma, the Pepsi Club works. Not today. Thank you, Pepsi Club. Pepsi, generation next. Available in six-pack. Robert Stack, man. You may remember him from Airplane, but I remember him from my nightmares, which were caused by the show Unsolved Mysteries, which he hosted. Because once again, my grandmother would watch shows with me that I had no reason to be watching. Next, we've got a commercial for Hunchback of Notre Dame, which kind of a weird choice for Disney to adapt, but I actually really like that movie. That song with uh, Dom Claude Frollo, uh, I think it's called Hellfire. That, that song's like super intense and super cool and not at all what you would expect from a Disney film. Then we get some must-see TV for NBC. I don't really watch TV anymore, do they still do that? So now we're back, and Lance Burton decides that he wants to show some sleight of hand. One magician, two hands, 
and lots of surprises. That's what she said. Yeah, I mean, he does some pretty basic sleight of hand tricks while making smoking look real cool to all the kids in the audience. And then he's ready to interact with the audience. How you doing? Howdy. What, what's your name, little buddy? Colton. Col Col how old are you, Colton? Four. Four years old. Okay, perfect. You're going to be my new assistant. Come on, let's give Colby a hand, folks. So he goes down, grabs this kid, doesn't ask his mother, you know, is it okay if I take your kid up here on the stage? Like, he's not shy or anything, right? I'm just going to grab him and bring him up. I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. I don't think Kobe here is actually just a regular old kid. I think there's a pretty good chance that he's a plant. Okay, let me borrow your shoe. I'll do the trick with the shoe. It's okay, go ahead, pull it off. It's all right. I'll use the, that's great. Oh, great, good kid. Uh, but see, now Kobe, usually I use a, a handkerchief when I do this trick. So I want you to do me one favor, okay? <laughs> Just pretend like this is a handkerchief, okay? All right, ready? Good, now I'm gonna take your handkerchief, Kobe. I'm gonna place your handkerchief into the box and I'm going to set the box on fire. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry, okay? And as you can see, Colby's handkerchief is perfectly fine. Thank you very much, Colby. Watch your step there. Colby, uh, listen, I, I, ha I have to talk to you, okay? Uh, I, I, I have to tell you something, and uh, I, I hope you'll take this like a man. Uh, uh, good. The trick didn't work. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, I'm very sorry about your shoe. We do have a very nice parting gift for you. <laughs> that poor kid is just sitting there like, I, dude, I don't know what you're saying half the time. You've completely destroyed my shoe. And you're making me look like a complete moron in front of this entire audience. Not to mention the fact that you've now handed me your cock. What am I supposed to do with this? Smile and bow. I'm sorry, can we go back and watch that again? I said bow, you little shit. Folks, keep your eye on Stephanie. She's a very tricky girl. As you're about to see. Look, I don't want to make a big deal about this, but the way that... The lovely assistants are treated in magic shows has always kind of made me feel a little weird. Like, they've always seemed like they're just kind of one step above, you know, the doves and the ducks being used in the act. Uh, like, they're almost sort of props? I don't know. It's just a little strange to me. And then I was thinking about it, and there are... The magic industry is a sausage fest, man. Like, I, I could not think of a single famous female magician. Now I've looked it up and I'm going to I'm going to show a few famous female magicians here. I'd like to see more, you know? That'd be great. Oh, wow, Lance. You switched places with a girl while you were behind that pillar. <laughs> it's not very impressive, I'm sorry to say. Man's reach exceeds his imagination. What? No. No, you didn't. Oh, that's so cool. He's, oh my gosh, how did he do that? How was he doing that? It's a double that comes out at the end. It's the only way. Okay, now we're getting to another round of commercials, and this next one is one that I had completely forgotten. Got a new haircut, think I look a fright. Need some comfort, mama, here's what I want tonight. I want the blues, crabbed macaroni 
and cheese. The blue box blues. Kids want the one in the blue box because it's the cheesiest. Crab, cheese, and macaroni. Yeah, this mac and cheese commercial is great because I remember the mac and cheese commercials that played on like Nickelodeon that were targeted towards kids, where this mac and cheese commercial is more targeted toward the parents. Like, your kid's gonna love this. Don't, don't have them singing the blues, you know? Or I guess you do want them singing the blues. I don't know. Don't move. Slowly put the donut down. And no one gets hurt. You have the right to fluffy nougat and milk chocolate with less fat. Thanks, this is really good, but you got a license for that sword? Big on chocolate, not on fat. It's kind of weird that they're uh, positioning a candy bar as a healthy alternative for a snack. It's a different time in the 90s. See Disney like you've never seen it before at Walt Disney's World on Ice, featuring 101 Dalmatians. KSL TV5 invites you to save 4 dollars on tickets to Family Night at Walt Disney's World on Ice, Wednesday, March 12th at 7 o'clock. Buy tickets now at the Delta Center box office and all Smith's Ticks outlets, or call 801-467-TICKS to charge by phone. Bring your whole family and join the Family Night fun and savings at Walt Disney's World on Ice, playing Delta Center March 12th through 17th from KSL TV5. Oh, my Oh man, that got me right in the feels. Delta Center is no more. I mean, it's still there. The building is still there, but it's called Vivin Arena. I don't know, man. It just seemed like a much more magical place when it was the Delta Center. Got so many good memories, like going to Disney on Ice, going to the circus when it came to town, and also going to the 1993 All-Star Game. I don't know, man. Made some pretty happy memories back when it was called the Delta Center. Okay, now we're getting into the masked ball. And uh, I've gone ahead and sort of edited it down to just the most important parts, uh, the ducks. those little guys. I love them so much. <sighs> Anyways, uh, the masked ball ends in a very dramatic way. Oh my god, he on X Games mode. Who are you? What do you want? <laughs> Who are you? What do you want? Like that was that was that was like a Neil Breen line reading. Who are you? What do you want? Who am I? What am I? Okay, so there's part of me that wants to do a deep dive on this, right? Like, the fact that Lance was really fighting himself, you know, once the mask is, is removed, the dark figure, the, the visage of darkness that, that he was dueling is ultimately himself. And I think, I think what that indicates is the fact that, you know, there's a chance that if he continues down a dark path filled with, with a need for violence and a need for getting revenge, he could end up being you know, a visage of darkness falling to the dark side as well. And that's why he's seeing himself uh, in his defeated shit. Nope, that's Empire Strikes Back. 
Your pregnancy is going well. But you're in a critical month. Toys are us, baby month! Yeah! Coupons to save big for your little one. <laughs> Bouncers, strollers, high chairs, and low prices. Diapers that are gentle on your budget. And car seats at prices that won't make you hit the roof! Oh, doctor, these coupons will save so much. How can we thank you? Well, I kind of like this blankie. Come to Toys R Us today! I would if I could, Toys R Us. I would if I could. Every three-quarter ounce Kraft Single is made from five ounces of milk. How do they do that? At night, when you're asleep, the dairy fairy glides into the dairy fairy yeah. and pours milk onto the cheese. Okay, so this is a commercial for uh, Kraft Singles. Now, Kraft Singles, uh, they are... I don't care if they say that there are five ounces of milk in every Kraft Single. That is still not real cheese. Uh, like, cheese is not supposed to have that consistency, right? But I'll be honest, if I'm having a grilled cheese, I want a Kraft Single. Uh, like, there, there is just mm, nothing better than a little Kraft Single, mac and cheese, and tomato soup. The Einstein brothers, Melvin, a master at hanging out, and Elmo, the master of fresh baked bagels who has invented the perfect bagel for sandwiches. I actually completely forgot about Melvin and Elmo. I, I forgot that the Einstein brothers actually had names. See how great a bagel sandwich can be. Hang out with the Einstein brothers. This week, buy a bagel sandwich and get another of equal or lesser value for a buck. Here, a home office means the freedom to be closer to the things you love. The very same things that can take you away from the phone. But because it's so important to see who called and when, if you order caller ID now, you'll get a free caller ID box, which logs the name, number, date, and time of incoming calls. Call now and the caller ID installation, as well as the caller ID box, is free. Life's better here. U.S. West. It's wild to see this as sort of a newer concept when it was sort of a novelty to be able to know who was calling you. All my life, I've had a fascination with Harry Houdini. I've even performed several of Houdini's signature escapes. Tonight, I'll be attempting three of Houdini's most difficult escapes, Buried Alive, The Water Torture Cell, and an escape from a regulation straitjacket. Three challenges never put together before. Any one of them can kill you. And that's why it's called the death tank. And to keep things strictly legit, we have a live audience here tonight. Not hired actors or extras, but real audience members who are just as curious and skeptical as our audience at home. And I'd like to invite six or seven of these audience members to step up here as witnesses to this lunacy. Come on up, folks. I just need some people. I want you to look at the straight jacket. Uh, a regulation straight jacket is made of sailcloth or canvas. Examine it. Make sure it doesn't stretch. It's not made of elastic. There's no hidden uh, zippers or Velcros. The locks are over here. Uh, would you please take the locks, open it and close it. Go ahead and lock it. The key is right here. Make sure they're in working order.
Oh, bro, no. Time's up. What are we gonna do? Okay, get the axe. Oh, he made it. Look at that. Shocker. Okay, we're going into the last commercial break before uh, the end of the Lance Burton segment. You know, we got a KFC commercial with the honey barbecue, and then we've got a Downy Ball commercial. That was classic. Question, sugar. Yes, Dennis. Is it true what they say about the green ones? Okay, come on, man. Tell the truth. You've been hanging out with Tucker Carlson again. That is an ugly rumor. It's a lie! How did this thing get started? Yo. You can do school or you can do drugs, but you can't do both. Choose school. This commercial has such an odd tone. It's like, it's like the way I talk to my daughter when we're in Target. You know, it's like you, you can have the LOL surprise or you can have the mini brands, but you can't have both. Okay, so that's Lance Burton in the rear view. I gotta say this for the guy. He is a really good magician. I think he has pretty darn good showmanship and his illusions are actually pretty impressive. We're going to get into David Letterman and I'm going to be honest, I'm, I don't have as much to say about David Letterman simply because it's humor and I don't know, humor is pretty subjective anyway. Uh, so she hated my tie until I told her it was made out of 100% Buttafuoco fiber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like 25 years old as well, and humor ages like milk. The show gets off to an odd start anyway, and it's no fault of the show itself. It's just, well, let's watch it. From New York, kaboom! <sighs> yeah, don't love that. Don't love that placement of the sound effect. But I'm sure that's as awkward as it's going to get. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Late Show video special number three. I'm your host, Bob Sagan. So the first section of this is going to be David Letterman working at a Taco Bell. Uh, going to be honest, this kind of gets under my skin more than it should. I get unreasonably angry at this. Look, you're already debasing yourself by going to Taco Bell. And if that sounds judgmental, it shouldn't. I have, in one sitting, uh, eaten three five-layer burritos. So, no judgment here. We've all been there. We've all been emotionally vulnerable. And we end up going to Taco Bell. Happens to the best of us. But you don't need a douchebag who's messing around with you. Just give me my food and let me drive off and eat it in my own private shame. Then we get this sort of like mini uh, bio. I left it just the way it was. Here are some of his model cars and his junior high basketball trophies, his pennants. Oh, and here's his first baseball glove. He loved playing Little League. He was the youngest child on his Little League team <laughs> and he got 300 that year. I don't know, man. Look, David Letterman, I, he's fine. But, I, I, like, I'll take him over James Corden any day of the week. 
What the hell was that? Tonight, Primetime Dave comes back to late night <laughs> with Bill Big Comedy. <laughs> you have a nickname now? Not really. Hirsch? Hirsch? Do people call you Hershey? Sometimes. Hershey, like the candy bar? Yeah. The bar. Try it. Call him the bar. Hey, look, it's the bar. <laughs> All right, the bar. Ah, yes, this is, this is the classic David Letterman sketch with the bar. And this is actually pretty funny. No bar, if you're going to be the big man on campus, you have to be popular. And to be popular, you have to do something that uh, makes people like you really, really well. Let's get some ideas. How old are you? There's just one final thing you have to do. You have to do something to get people's attention. Three, two, one, go! He knows what he wants. He wants so here's the thing david letterman's a little lying bitch uh that is not the bar that is the producer's brother how do i know that because i went to boston university's website and found an article about the bar from 2000 in which he revealed that it was not him running across the field He's a liar. It's Arby's Five Buff Roundup. All day, every day. Get your choice of three tangy beef and cheddars or four regular roast beefs or five authentic barbecues for just five bucks. Why are middle-aged men so anxious to go under the knife for a little nip and tuck these days? Tonight on 2 News at 10, you'll see what many guys are willing to do, all in the name of vanity. Hello, I'm Michelle King. And I'm Phil Reeson. You'll also see how cloning sheep is now a reality, along with the many ethical questions it raises for humans. Okay, guys. Dolly the sheep. This is how I know that this is February of 1997, because that's when it was announced when she was introduced to the public. Uh, the first cloned mammal, and this was a gigantic deal uh, back when it happened. Bee Society. A fascinating study in communications and productivity. How does a bee signal the hive he has found a field of nectar-filled flowers with MCI cellular service? See the queen call her attendants. See the attendants respond to their MCI pagers. See why their society is so contented. That commercial has not aged well. Uh, we now know that cellular signal, uh, cellular signals between headsets and uh, uh, cell towers actually really mess around with bees and disorient them uh, and keep them from being able to carry out their tasks. And it's even suggested by some researchers that this could possibly be uh, one of the reasons for colony collapse. So great commercial, MCI. Hold on as CBS explodes with music. All right, I'm sorry. I'm stopping this, and I'm about to go on a little bit of a rant here for Alanis Morissette and the song Ironic and how nothing in that song is actually ironic. I recognize that Alanis Morissette has come out and said that she knows that she made a big goof up, but I don't care. This song has been getting under my skin for 25 years now, and I just need to kind of get some things off my chest. Being a Dark Lord of the Sith who has the power to save others, but not the power to save yourself from your stupid, creepy-ass, Nubian little apprentice when he gets you drunk and then kills you in your sleep, that's ironic. 
Rain on your wedding day, on the other hand, that's not ironic. That's just a crappy thing that happens. You know, when your brother, who mainly sticks to the shadows unless he's coming out to say something to ruin your day, comes out and says, hey, watch out, it's going to be a rainy day. And the thing is, you've been given this mystical gift by, I don't know, a candle or something that makes you have control over the weather. And then because he said that, he's throwing you off kilter. And so it rains out. Finding out that your fare was paid for when you've already paid for a ride, that's not ironic. That's just like weird or funny. And as far as like good advice that you just don't take, that's, that's, that's not ironic. That's just stupid. I mean, that's, that's like when your dad says, son, don't major in English. You can't make a living on English. You can't support a family with an English degree. And then you find yourself in your spare time having to pump out videos for YouTube just to make ends meet. Dad, I'm sorry. I should have listened to you. You are 100% right. I'm sorry. I... I'm so upset. I We're done. I'm not going to go into any more of David Letterman. Let's just cut to the outro. We're done. All right. Welcome back to 2021. I hope you enjoyed your trip. What was your favorite thing today? I got a little surprise for all of you, okay? You can watch the entire two hours recording of this video uh, on my second channel. I've got a link to it down below, so you can check that out. If you were a patron... Pa patron, a patron on Patreon, you would get access to this video early. Uh, a few days before this went up, I will uh, post these early on my Patreon page. Uh, and if you pledge any amount of money, they'll be open up to you. You're also going to get a shout out. Now, I have really dropped the ball when it comes to my Patreon in the past. I am trying to pick it up because I want to do more cool things like this, which requires me spending money on very obsolete and expensive technology, like a VHS camera that actually works. Culture Arson was, uh, reached out to me on Patreon and asked if it was still active, and I didn't get back to him, and I feel really horrible. The answer, uh, Culture Arson, is that no, it wasn't at the time, but it is now. So go and check that out. Join now and be a member of the crew of the USS Super Rad. <laughs> Apparently, we're uh, Aquabats fan club. That's what we are. So join. I, c I can't be any clearer. Uh, if you liked this video uh, in any way, shape, or form, if it uh, connected with you at all, a like would be greatly appreciated. Uh, and if you liked the cut of my jib, you should subscribe. I release a video every... I release a video on a very, very irregular schedule. So doesn't that just make you want to subscribe?